Hey, what's up? Welcome back, guys. Um, today we're going to have a quick talk about compressor specifications and what you need to be able to spray. Uh, this is a very common question. People ask me, you know, what compressor do I need to be able to paint with a gun? And it depends. It depends on what kind of gun you have, really. So it's, it's a tough question to answer properly, to actually give an answer to. But what I can do is kind of give you an idea of how you can figure this out. Typically, when you have a gun, uh, when you and I mean a paint gun, obviously, for those of you in America. Anyway, typically when you have a paint gun, it has specifications on it about what you need in terms of CFM, that's cubic feet per minute of output, and what you need in terms of PSI, which is pounds per square inch of pressure. Um, so you need a compressor that's going to meet those specifications. Well, I shouldn't say that. You ideally will have a compressor that will meet those specifications. Uh, and there are a couple things that you need to keep in mind. The most important of which, in my opinion, is that your pressure and your cubic feet per minute output decreases as you go further from the compressor, as you add more, you know, per foot of hose, let's say, it goes down a little bit. So if you're kind of on the edge of being able to meet those specifications, it's going to be in your best interest probably to use a shorter hose, almost as short as you possibly can, really. Um, when you get into like a 50 foot hose or something, you need a bigger compressor, a shop compressor that's going to be able to handle that. Now, a lot of guns will run 6 CFM, a lot will run 8, you know, and it'll say, you know, I, I don't know, uh, 4 CFM at 90 PSI. Cats are causing trouble again. You're never going to run a gun at 90 PSI. You shouldn't. You're going to run it at closer to like 30, so... So you're going to have uh, more CFM because you're running at that lower pressure. So that's a good thing. Um, another thing that you... Uh, see, I lost my train of thought because the damn cat's trying to climb into my closet here. Anyway, uh, you can sometimes get away with using a, uh, a compressor that doesn't quite have that power. If it, particularly if you're doing a smaller project, like let's say you're doing a, a guitar or you want to clear coat a model or something. Um, if you've got a compressor that doesn't quite meet that specification, you can get away with it if you have a bigger tank. So what you do is you fire up your compressor and you wait for your tank to fill all the way. And that's going to provide that extra air. Because if your compressor runs out of power, can't keep up with your gun, runs out of air, it's going to start spitting. And, uh, and it's going to cause a lot of problems with your paint job. You really don't want to run into that situation. So, I mean, it's best not to experiment and to get a, a bigger compressor, you know, something that puts out 6 CFM, no problem, at 40 PSI so that you can spray at 26 all day if you want to. Um, but failing that, get yourself a compressor with a bigger tank. It's probably a cheaper option. Or add another tank to it, fill those up, uh, and there should be enough air in there, hopefully, to carry you through your project. So that's really all I've all I've got for tips about that. Um, you'll you'll want to have you know a regulator, but you don't have to have one on your compressor. You can have one at the base of your gun. Even if you have one on your compressor, you'll want one at the base of your gun anyway, because that's where you're going to get the most accurate readout of your pressure. Like I said, it drops over the course of its travel through the hose. So yeah, hopefully that helps. I know it's not super informative, and uh, and there's a lot to consider when you're making those decisions. But uh, th those are some guidelines, and uh, yeah, thanks for watching. If you have any questions, or even if you don't, maybe just make some up and put them in the comment section below, and I'll do my best to answer them for you, either in one of these upcoming videos or in the comment section itself. As always, thanks for watching. Have a good one. See you next time.